Hi, I'm Andrew Ikechuku Adudu, and I'm from Nigeria. I live in Kansas City, and um, I was um, a student at the Block School, uh, at the Block School of Business here in Kansas City, um, I think eight years ago now. So it's wonderful uh, to be sharing about um, Nigeria, my upbringing, and, um, and, and things about my culture. <laughs> so I'm starting with my background, right? Okay. Um, so I was born in the northern part of Nigeria, uh, which is called Kano. And, um, and Nigeria is a country in Africa. is um, It's the most populous country. I think um, it, right now, census show 206 million people live in Nigeria. And out of that um, population, um, I think 50%, um, according to statistics, 50% Muslim and 40-something percent Christian. I was born in the north and the northern part, predominantly Muslim. So I grew up with Muslim. Majority of my friends were Muslim. I went to a Catholic school. Uh, I was born in a family of six. Uh, so I had five siblings, five boys, one girl, and I was the fifth child. <laughs> um, I went to a Catholic school. Um, I went to a government school um, for my primary school, and I went to a Catholic school for my secondary school. So it's a British system, not an American system of education. So we have the 663, I think that's what it's called. So six years of primary school, six years of college, of um, secondary school, and then three to four years of, um, of college. So I grew up um, um, with uh, five siblings and um, well, my family members are um, Christians. So my dad is a Catholic. My mom is your classic Pentecostal or evangelical. <laughs> so we, um, so I would go to church with my dad um, because it was predictable. It was one hour and we're out of there. Go play, you know, as kids, we just want to go play. So that was a little bit, that was, um, um, that was my Christian um, upbringing. Um, but for my secondary school, I remember being the, the head prefect. So I was the school prefect, um, the, the guy who oversees all of the students. Um, the principal of my school was German. I remember her telling me um, that I could, um, I could be whatever I want. Um, I could be an aeronautic engineering. So she really inspired me. I remember um, her taking um, my class through um, mathematics. Uh, she was the one that instilled in me this um, desire, this drive that I could do it. So I studied um, um, calculus. <laughs> at a university level. I was in high school, but I would sneak into um, university um, uh, classroom to go learn calculus. So I remember that um, in that early um, stages of my life. Um, something interesting about um, um, Kano or Nigeria as a whole, Kano is, uh, is considered like the industrial capital. So there's a lot of industry in the Northern part. Uh, there are lots of Indians uh, that live in the northern part. One of my teachers uh, is uh, is an Indian. Um, it was um, it drew uh, people from different parts of the world. There were Lebanese. Um, there's a Lebanese school uh, not too far away from where my parents had their business, and um, it was both a farming community and um, cattle rear. So there are people who have cattle and goats and rams. So there were, there were rich folks who, who had farms and who had people who worked um, that kind of um, agricultural society. So the northern part was like that. Um, any other thing interesting that I could share? I think those are some of the, you know, some of the backgrounds of my upbringing, uh, of me growing up. So, I, um, so if, uh, if I want to summarize, you know, how did Andrew grew up, uh, grow up, I would say I grew up um, uh, not in the farm, but <laughs> there were, you know, there were, there were cattle, um, there were farms, and it was also um, partly a city as well, an industrial city uh, that, had, um, that had people from different parts of the world. Um, a guy in my class is um, from Ghana. I had uh, people from Ghana, people from Algeria. So uh, quite interesting mix um, that I grew up around. So in a typical week, what are some of your favorite foods that you would have eaten? Like a typical breakfast oh, or typical dinner? My mom 
runs a restaurant. <laughs> so, um, so uh, the morning time, very English. So we would have um, tea and, and bread and jam. Uh, we didn't have peanut butter. So it was bread, jam, and butter. So that's all <laughs> we had for breakfast. And we look, I look forward to it because my dad would wake us up. So we, um, as kids, I remember waking up at 6, 6.30 and my dad would already make tea and we'd drink hot tea. Um, maybe it's English uh, or maybe it's just, you know, my, uh, the way my dad um, grew up. He was your typical merchant. So he worked, um, you could liken it to Costco. So they had, uh, it's a company that had a manufacturing arm that manufactured different products and they would sell it local and they would sell it domestic as well. So nationally. So I grew up um, having tea and bread for breakfast and then in the daytime um, after school we would run to my mom's restaurant not too far away from my school eat rice and beans and plantains oh my goodness just talking about it I can taste it um, so we had um, this fufu this gari uh, pounded yam which is made out of yam um, so and then different kinds of soup that is made out of um, greens vegetables and things like that it was delicious so typically that is like um, that's like a staple rice and beans was a staple I remember eating rice and beans and then if it were like the weekend then there's chicken and there's beef <laughs> because there's all those, you know, animals. So uh, you could easily, there are butcher shops, um, you know, in different places. So those are the kinds of food uh, that I ate growing up and uh, helping my mom also at the restaurant. So um, all the boys and the girl, uh, my sister is um, the second child of the family. So uh, she would normally help out, you know, in the preparation of the meals um after you know after work or something of that nature so that was uh that was uh, that was food so what brought you to kansas city and why are you still here after all these years that is a great question <laughs> so uh backtrack um just to give you a little bit of context but not too much 2006 i left nigeria for india uh, went to go study all things it so i did uh, computer networking um, I um, did uh, database administration, so I practiced, I learned and I practiced there in India. And I wanted to do more. I wanted to, um, uh, I wanted to experience more. So a friend of mine who works for Google, he was the IT analyst for Google in Hyderabad. So Google had one of their branches in two, um, two of their major um, um, outsourcing in India. One was in Hyderabad, the other was in New Delhi. So um, I would frequent Google. I, you know, saw their teams, how they worked, and um, he advised. He said, "Hey, I graduated from a university in Malaysia. I think, you know, what you're describing when it comes to business and IT, you could find it there." So I went to Malaysia. <laughs> um, uh, I studied in Malaysia uh, after, uh, well, before Malaysia, I was in India for about three years. And then in Malaysia, there I was two years into um, business, uh, my business um, and IT study, I got a scholarship. And I got a scholarship to the University of Missouri, Kansas City. That was how I came to the US. Um, two years into my study in Malaysia, uh, I was able to transfer my credit hours, um, I think 95% of my credit hours to UMKC. So two years later, I graduated, voila, here I am um, in Kansas City. Um, and uh, it was immediately after my graduation that um, I got connected with then uh, International Visitors Council. That was what it was called. Now it's Global um, Global Ties KC. Yes. So I think it added um, it added to to my life. It added to my experience. When I think about it, uh, first um, I had something called optional practical training uh, (OPT), which is given by the government for uh, a, an immigrant or an international student uh, to be able to work legally. So I had that, and uh, Mr. Albert um, is his name. He used to be the executive director, uh, then International Visitors Council. Um, he took a liking to me. Uh, he and Air, um, and um, Courtney actually interviewed me. Uh, Courtney, am I making this up? Okay. 
So, so both of them interviewed me, I remember, and um, he, he said, yeah, I think we would need, um, you know, we would need some help. So when I came in, um, the, you know, the culture of an organization that embraces other, uh, other countries and other culture uh, from diverse um, economic um, backgrounds, I thought that was very enriching for, uh, for Global Ties KC. Uh, and for me to be in that environment, it was just natural because majority of my life has been spent around people from different cultures. I was born in the northern part. I grew up with Muslims. I grew up with people from Algeria, Ghana, and um, other parts of Africa, um, India, and Lebanon. And then I left Nigeria for India. In India, um, I was in the southern part of India, Hyderabad. But I had, um, I was part of, um, it's an international, um, international um, student body across the world that would bring people from different parts of the world to spend about three months doing an internship in a new culture. So I was part of that and I had uh, Europeans, I had chi um, um, Taiwanese, um, Chinese, and um, a few people from Hong Kong. So, um, so I've been around different, I've been around diversity and it, it's become a part of me for me to gravitate people who don't look like me. I do not shun people that look like me. I actually love people that look like me and I do love more people that don't look like me because I feel like there's so much I could learn. There's so much I could gain. There's so much, um, you know, we could share, uh, because we're very different. So that mindset have stayed with me all of my life. India, then Malaysia and um, and then UMKC. UMKC is like, wow, they are international. They're people from different parts of the world. And working at um, uh, the International Business Council was um, just right for me because then, I don't know if it was Courtney that started this, but uh, they were receiving visitors and they were working with the State Department or Secretary of State. And um, we would be part of those people who were like the first impression, first face, you know, uh, Americans that are receiving them. Um, how wonderful would it be, you know, for someone who has somewhat of a different background to receive someone from a different culture and they feel so welcomed because I felt welcomed when I came into the United States. I want to extend the same. So it was just, it was wonderful um, in that sense, culturally. And then intellectually, uh, it had it challenged me to use some IT to help like um, bring things online. I'm like, okay, Courtney, why don't we try this? Could we, could I try this? So she was open for me to try and things that were new that the, you know, the office has never used before. I don't know to what extent it was used. And some of them were new to me, but I was able to work um, based on my experience in India. I was able to bring that in based on my experience from the block school. I was able to shape some of the things that had to do with the back end database administration. So it was a good time that I had. Um, so I, I spent um, a few months doing some database um, management um, for um, International Visitors Council uh, and then started, um, well, was asked if I could join a team to do research um, uh, with a missions organization. So I left for Florida with my wife um, and seven years later, I'm back to Kansas City. So <laughs> um, uh, six, six to seven months now in Kansas City as an outreach pastor at a local church. So I do local outreach and some global outreach or uh, global missions in about 40, uh, 40 plus countries um, we have work going on. So uh, I'm local, but at the same time international. So very interesting. So what did you know or think about Kansas City before you came here the first time? And how is the city different now than it was when you were here seven years ago? Great question. What I did know about Kansas City is that it was cold. <laughs> I was going to be seeing snow and it was going to be my first time. Um, I think I only knew one person um, who um, we went to the same church um, in Malaysia and I knew that he was going to be in Kansas City. So he was the one that helped me um, kind of assimilate into the culture or acclimate into the into a new environment. So what I knew about Kansas City then was um, it was a developing, thriving, and just, you know, cutting edge and 
it hasn't changed. So that was what I saw when I came, um, other than you know it being cold. It was at first hot. It was as hot as it was in July when I came, as it was in India. So I was really shocked, you know, by the heat. <laughs> I think there was a heat wave then. Um, it hasn't happened. It didn't happen this year, but. In 2010, uh, when I came, July 18th, I remember it being very, very hot. So um, that year, I experienced snow for the first time. It was, uh, it, I was so thrilled um, by it. I would walk to class, you know, um, yeah, all bundled up. I enjoyed the snow. And the irony is, there is no snow. I've never seen any snow in Nigeria. There's no place where it snows in Nigeria. It just gets very cold. But this was a different experience for me. So I loved, 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 loved the cold. And I still love it uh, now. Um, so the major differences um, um, for me is um, the weather and the climate. And the, the same things that I've stayed in Kansas City is just Kansas City is always innovating. You have people who... Um, uh, who are constantly, you know, wanting to uh, be be different or grow, uh, probably because it's surrounded by two universities. Uh, that's why it's that way. Um, but I love um, that, um, you know, that kind of flair in the atmosphere where you feel like, yes, I could study, I could do better. Uh, I don't need to stay the same. And uh, so I love I love the drive for um, uh, for just getting better. Have you been back to Nigeria in the last decade and how's it? Oh, different? yes. <laughs> I look forward to going probably next year. I was hoping to go this year. I was, um, I was in Nigeria in 2016, I think, uh, the fall of 2016. Um, uh, not much has changed, unfortunately. Uh, I think that's the reason why um, um, my generation, I would say, uh, there is frustration around that. Um, the economic um, as well as the political uh, landscape is very discouraging um, for, for my generation. There's some of my friends that are already involved in politics um, to, to bring about change. Um, so it's discouraging to see that the economic, um, the economic climate of Nigeria hasn't, um, hasn't improved. Um, and uh, there are lots of reasons, you know, for, um, for that, but I'm not going to go into that. So when I visited in 2016, um, it's, um, it's um, a little bit a little bit bad and um, right now probably worse uh, from what I've been hearing um, around jobs and um, and uh, just investments as well uh, there's still there's still some foreign investments still interested in Nigeria it's um, it has the fifth uh, largest oil well in the world. So uh, there's so much of potential when it comes to Nigeria and its natural resources, but uh, there are lots of things culturally happening that is affecting um, the growth, economic growth um, and economic climate of the country. So that is how it was when I visited. Of course, I saw my, my parents. It was a surprise visit for my mom and dad. <laughs> my sister knew I was coming. I said, don't tell them I'm coming into town. So I wanted to just um, do a surprise and it was phenomenal. We had a good time, cooked, um, visited uh, my high school, visited where the restaurant used to be before Boko Haram came in and did some destruction and um, just visited familiar places. So it was wonderful. It was surreal. I remember when I, uh, when I lived in Florida or when I left Kansas City for Florida, anytime I visit the Midwest, I would go to UMKC, I'll go to Union Station, <laughs> I'll go to downtown, um, I'll just go to familiar places and just walk. It's just, um, it's, I don't know if it's nostalgia or you know what, it just, it, it feels good to go back to where that was live, you know, for you. I had friends. I walked that road. Um, I mean, I'm on this call telling you this. Last week, I was at, I was on UMKC campus <laughs> on Saturday, precisely, and I went to the library. I walked to the library and I said, hmm, that was the library room where I gave a presentation to my wife. <laughs> and I was telling her something that has to do with the brain. And I asked her out in that library. 
<laughs> so it was wonderful. Um, I just love to go back to um, um, places uh, that, um, that were meaningful to me and tell stories, you know, of what happened um, while I was there. So I hope to do that uh, when the kids and Tylene and I um, go to Nigeria, hopefully next year, just circumstances have not made it to work out in such a way that we all would go. Uh, it's always something comes up. So I'm looking forward to the time when all of us would do that. Awesome. Um, and so you're obviously not the only Nigerian in Kansas City. How many other Nigerians do you know here? And is there a community? There is. Um, when, um, when I was a student, um, those big uh, Nigerian community actually went to a Nigerian church. Um, and um, so I, I miss all my friends because uh, majority of us graduated or probably all of us graduated and moved out to different um, parts of the, of the U.S. Um, so since I came back the past seven months, um, the pandemic hasn't made it very easy, you know, for people to move around. So, um, but there was a Nigerian who um, came over to my house. Um, she, um, the very interesting story about her is that um, my wife is a teacher or used to be a teacher at um, uh, an inner city school here in Kansas City University Academy. And um, uh, one of the students that she taught now um, planning to be a medical doctor or trying to go to medical school uh, she uh, kind of kept in contact with her and she came to visit she's Nigerian <laughs> so th that's really cool um, but I um, I haven't uh, met so much um, of Nigerians since I came just two uh, two people so far and um, I know that um, the big um, community uh, Nigerian community in Kansas City um, I, ha I haven't been to the church um, yet um, so that is, um, I think that that'll be like an easy place to meet them um, at the church. And then there's a professor, a Nigerian professor at, a, at the University of, um, University of Missouri, Kansas City. Um, he, he is um, he's a professor of, I think, um, geology or so, at the geography um, department. So I think he's still here. Um, uh, I plan visiting him and his family. So that's another, you know, big community um, uh, that is here. They are on the Kansas side. 